Thank you for joining us for another video in our series, The Art of Cerclage. This video focuses on anatomy. The learning objectives for this video include reviewing pertinent anatomy and then illustrating this anatomy on the cerclage model used in this video series. Let's begin by reviewing the female perineum. For surface anatomy, first is the labia majora, which are large fleshy folds that enclose and protect the other external genital organs. The labia minora are small folds that begin at the clitoris and extend downward. The anterior folds of the labia minora encircle the clitoris and form the clitoral hood and frenulum. The posterior fourchette is where the labia minora meet posteriorly. The vestibule is the inner portion of the vulva, extending from the labia minora inward to the hymenal ring. Within the vestibule is the urethra. The urethra is posterior to the clitoris and anterior to the vaginal opening. The area below the posterior fourchette is called the perineum. It extends until the anus. On the model used in this series, you can see the labia majora, labia minora, and the posterior fourchette. The clitoris is most anterior, and the perineum is the area below the posterior fourchette and the anus. A key difference in the model is that the urethra is not present. The vaginal opening is much larger to facilitate learning. To orient yourself to this diagram, the light yellow portion is the abdominal cavity. Inferiorly is the vagina. Let's start out with the uterus. In the purple box is the body of the uterus. There is the ovary, fallopian tube, and round ligament. Also highlighted is the cardinal ligament, which provides support for the uterus, cervix, and upper vagina. It attaches the cervix to the lateral pelvic sidewall. It also carries some of the vessels from the uterine artery. Now we will focus on the cervix. The cervix occupies both an external and internal position in the body. The lower half, or intravaginal part, is at the upper end of the vagina. The opening of the cervix is called the external os. The fornix is the corner of the vagina where a recess is formed by protrusion of the cervix into the vagina. Essentially, there are vaults. They are named by position, anterior, posterior, right and left lateral fornix. The upper half, or internal cervix, lies above the vagina and is in the abdominal cavity. It has the internal os which opens into the uterine cavity. The blood supply of the cervix is from the cervical branch of the uterine arteries. It is very important to be cognizant of the position of the cervical vessels, especially when performing any procedure. The cervical branch of the uterine artery descends into the lateral aspects of the cervix. If you were to imagine the face of a clock on a cervix, the vessels would be at three and nine o'clock positions. These areas should be avoided when injecting local anesthetic to prevent direct infusion into the bloodstream and when placing a suture or needle to avoid blood loss. Additionally, it's important to note anatomy near the operating area to be mindful and avoid injury to nearby tissue or organs. The bladder is anterior to the cervix in the anterior fornix. The rectum is posterior to the cervix, deep to the posterior wall of the vagina and posterior fornix. In general, the rectum is less at risk for injury than the bladder because there's more space posteriorly. With outward retraction of the cervix, usually by placing a ring forcep, an anterior fold is detectable. This is where the bladder reflects onto the anterior edge of the cervix, the cervical vesicle junction. This is an important landmark to note. When placing a cerclage vaginally, the goal is to place the suture as high up on the cervix as possible without injuring the bladder. Delineating this junction helps avoid bladder injury. Let's use the model to visualize this anatomy. You can see the external os clearly on the intravaginal portion of the cervix. You can envision the blood vessels at three and nine o'clock positions on the cervix. Anterior to the cervix is the bladder, 
and posterior to the cervix is the rectum. By using a ring forcep, you can conceptualize the cervical vesicle junction anteriorly. Similarly, you can recognize the rectum is posterior to the cervix and deep to the posterior wall of the vagina. You can also reflect on the increased space posteriorly. In this video, we discussed and reviewed important anatomical concepts and locations. Prior to every operation, you should always review the steps and the relevant anatomy to increase your learning and to avoid injury to surrounding structures. Again, thank you for joining us and we hope you continue to watch the other videos in this series.